Ciao. Of course. Um, okay, you know what? I'm gonna go kick out the kill. Wait, wait, what are we gonna do about dinner party? Don't care. Yeah, Pop, no one's gonna care about dinner party. Why well, I'm saying hold on? What are you gonna do? Like, no, I can't hold on anymore. Jeff Gammett's here with us, everybody. Jeff Gammett uh, rounding out the week with us. And wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be something? He was like, yeah, I gotta bounce. Yeah. Oh, I hear my mom calling. Gotta go, can't buy. <laughs> exactly. Because we have plans. We're having people over. Uh, this is week number two, by the way. You were the second person to do this. And I'm very excited about it. Um, because uh, sort of like I said earlier this week about services, it tells us about the person that we're talking to when we find out who Jeff Gamut would invite to his dinner party. Let me ask you a question. Because when I sent this to you, I didn't send it to you with much warning, I don't think. How did you go about putting together your list? Did you say, these are three people I would like to meet? Or was it, these are three people I would like to see, you know, at the same table? How did you, how did you go about uh, deciding who would, be, who would get the invitation? It was actually a hybrid. Three people that that I would really enjoy sitting down with, but also three people that I think it would just be fascinating to have a conversation with all of them at the same time. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I think, did I explain, by the way, what we're doing? I know I did last week. It's basically, you know, uh, time is, doesn't matter. Language doesn't matter. It's just, it's a magical dinner table. Uh, probably like a seven course meal to get like, you know, two and a half, three hours to sit and chat with people. And so you get to invite three people, three people from history. Maybe they're famous. Maybe they're not. They don't have to be living today. Um, we could just jump right in and find out. Uh, I, well, I guess we could find out who got the first invitation. First invitation went out to Kurt Vonnegut Jr. Wow. OK, tell me why. Uh, because Kurt Vonnegut Jr. is... Uh, I, I think one of the greatest uh, writers of the 20th century. And I have loved every single thing of his that I've been able to get my hands on to read. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and just from other interviews that I've seen of him in the mm -hmm. past, what a fascinating man. I would just love to have the opportunity just, just to have a conversation. I mean, we don't even have to have a specific topic, but just to be able to talk with him would be, amazing and wonderful yeah one, one of my biggest regrets honestly is i was supposed to go see him and i forgot to ask off from work and so uh, a ticket oh. that i had yeah i know went to waste uh, so i could you know stay and make money for um, a gigantic corporation that doesn't miss me <laughs> and practically just, practically doesn't exist anymore but uh you know it just hurts like yeah. almost brings a tear to my eye i mean Oh, what a missed opportunity. I'm curious, oh. uh, what's your, uh, it might be hard to say what's your favorite, but what's your favorite book by him? It, uh, it, ac it actually does fluctuate. Um, the, the one that consistently becomes my favorite mm -hmm. is, uh, uh, actually it kind of bounces back and forth between that too. Um, <laughs> Breakfast of Champions has, has just always resonated with me. Okay. Um, and uh, one of the things that I loved and I feel totally comfortable talking about anything in the book because at this point, if it's a spoiler to you, gang, it's way too late for this to be a spoiler to you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is this is not a new book. Uh, but just the whole thing where he had all of these characters and he gave them permission to just be themselves and go live their own lives. And just the whole idea of having these characters that you have invented and controlled – and uh, and then giving them free will, just I just loved that. I think mine, and I don't know why, I, and and I seriously cannot figure out why. I keep trying to, and I can't. But it's Sirens of Titan. Oh my God, I love that book. And I don't know, but that's like that's one of his books I will go back and read, you know, every few years. And I I I, I don't know why. I don't know what it is, but there's something in that book that just that draws me every time. I've gone back and reread Cat's Cradle multiple times too. Hmm. And uh, actually, I'm visualizing. I seriously, I have uh, a collection of Kurt Vonnegut books on a bookshelf in my bedroom, mm -hmm. and I'm just looking at the edges of these books in my <laughs> mind, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, God bless you, Mr. Rosewater. I really love reading that one too." And and uh, and what about Bagumbo Snuffbox? 
I mean, you know, when when we get into his later stuff, mm-hmm. it's like, like uh, uh, I guess there's a lot of people that that aren't even aware of that. But then reading things like like his essays or or collections of letters, mm-hmm. I mean, that's absolutely fascinating. Hmm. Uh, who else, sir? Who's next? Fred Rogers. Okay, I don't even need to ask why, but I will. I mean, can can you imagine just having the opportunity to spend even an hour, even 10 minutes with Fred Rogers? My only concern is I, I know that um, I, I curse a lot. <laughs> Fred Rogers, I think, would be totally okay. You think so? Yeah, I, I think. I think I'd I be think, afraid to disappoint him. <laughs> don't be afraid to disappoint Fred Rogers because you won't. Because right. he, he will find the the good and amazing and compelling part in whatever it is that you bring to the table. Hmm. And just just being able to have just that pure awesomeness of sitting down and, and talking with him. Mm-hmm. But then imagine Fred Rogers and Kurt Vonnegut being part of that conversation at the same time. <laughs> you see, that's interesting because you actually didn't think about, okay, so if we put all these people at the table, because I'll tell you, honestly, when I was thinking about how I would answer this question, one of the people I want to have at the table, I, I thought, is my grandfather. I thought about that too. You want to talk to my grandfather? Uh, totally. Oh, okay. I don't blame you. Well, and, and mine too. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, we could get them together. See, here's the thing though. I don't think I actually want my grandfather at the table with anybody else. I think really what I would like is just time to talk to my grandfather, which isn't going to happen. Because like, I, if, if I had like Kurt Vonnegut and my grandfather at the table, it would pretty much be me turning to my grandfather and asking him a couple of questions and then turning to Kurt Vonnegut. I can't see them, you know, hitting it off at all. And then Mr. Rogers, well, I don't even know what my grandfather would think of that. But So would having Fred Rogers at the table just be to feel the good feeling? Or are there particular things that you'd like to ask him about, particular things you'd like to sort of know? Well, I mean, of course, having him at the table just to feel good it would be great. But what a, what a waste of the time. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I want to talk to him about, about, about life, about his philosophy – on uh on well anything that interests him uh i want to talk to him about about what he experienced when he was being truly revolutionary with his children's television show Mm -hmm. and uh and like fighting back against cultural norms and i mean what was he experiencing when he was just doing what he did so well okay so we got kurt vonnegut we got fred rogers by the way are these people seated in any particular order is somebody to your left is somebody across from you is somebody to your right <laughs> are there place cards actually i have visualized this to, to my left is kurt vonnegut okay across from me is fred rogers okay and to well, my right well, is well, well hold on drum roll okay go ahead katie mack She's an astrophysicist. Okay. She, she's Astro Katie on Twitter. Okay. So, it's, so you can learn a lot about her there. But she's just absolutely brilliant astrophysicist. Mm-hmm. And she's also very approachable and very personable. And she, I mean, she can, can communicate in ways that are easy to understand. And, uh, um, She's just like this really awesome down to earth person, at least based on her public persona. And I like to believe that's who she is when she's not in public as well, but just so incredibly brilliant. And I've had a lifelong interest in astronomy anyhow. Mm -hmm. So to be able to talk with someone that has her depth of knowledge and is totally willing to call people out when they're wrong Mm -hmm. is a, is wonderful Uh, but it's it's kind of funny because every now and then i'll read something that she puts on twitter and i realize what she's doing is slamming neil degrasse tyson (laughs) okay and sometimes you know it's kind of like uh like a subtle thing where she doesn't tell you that uh, she's bagging on something neil degrasse tyson said but other times she'll just come straight out and and say that uh, that something 
that Neil deGrasse Tyson said is total crap. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And then explained the real thing. I love, and I don't travel in the kind of circles where this gets to happen that often, or I get to have this happen that often. But um, I love when you talk to somebody who knows something about science, who knows about science, and then they're able to say it to you in a way that you can finally hear it. Mm-hmm. Like there's the whole like, and it may have been the setting. It may have been about to stop, but you know, the whole thing of like, you know, we're all made of stars and you know, uh, that whole thing, right? The stuff. Uh, oh, see, from, now I want to have Carl Sagan in on, on the dinner too. Thanks. Okay. Well, here's the thing though. I'll tell you somebody that you might actually get to bump into at some point. Uh, there's a guy named uh, Dr. Robert Hurt who used to, uh, I think he might still do stuff for a podcast that um, is on the Roddenberry podcast network. The um, priority one. But one of the times that I was visiting L.A., uh, one of the guys from Priority One and I uh, met up with Dr. Robert. Mm-hmm. And we met at, uh, we met at uh, uh, Griffith Observatory. And the thing is, um, the, the other guy, I mean, we're, we're you know, movie guys. We're show people, right? So I'm having the whole, this is where James Dean was in Rebel Without a Cause. That's where the Rocketeer landed, <laughs> in mm-hmm. the Rocketeer, you know. And, and, and Robert honestly was a bit annoyed with this, I think, because he's like, you know, there's science here, too. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Rocketeer, man. And so we're inside and we're doing and they have the thing. They have uh, uh, like a like a display of, of periodic elements. And there was a button that you could push. And and he said, OK, so you see those elements that are lit up right now. And I'm like, yeah, he's like, OK those aren't from here but they're here now they came from someplace else and there are bits of those elements in all of us see that's so awesome and 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 i don't know if it was just standing there seeing it i don't know if it was him because i've heard that before but i don't know if it's just having somebody standing next to you going no seriously dummy listen because then that that like filled me he didn't call me dummy obviously but that, that sort of filled me with like like that you know that kind of understanding it's a wonderful it's a wonderful thing when you can when you can have that happen i and and i applaud your third seat there and uh, tell me again how can people follow her on twitter what's her what's her on twitter she is astro katie astro a s t r o k a t i e Astro Katie. Okay. Uh, and I will say, I found out recently, anybody who got on the HBO Max train earlier this year, uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor, which is the Fred Rogers documentary, not the thing that Tom Hanks was in, but the documentary, mm-hmm. um, is now available on HBO Max, I believe. Either that or Netflix, but I believe HBO Max. And of course, uh, you know, uh, Kurt Vonnegut um, is probably already on your bookshelves, and if he isn't... He should be. Please rectify that. Yeah. It was, it was a good dinner, Mr. Gamut, and a good week. Uh, thank you very much for spending both with us, and uh, we'll talk to you next week post-WWDC. Awesome, and thanks for having me back. You rock. You rock.